Hi everybody, my name is Karen Cavett and I make videos on here every Friday, so please do subscribe if you like what you see. So today I have a video for you that's part graphic design, part DIY. So a few years ago, Penguin released a collection of books called the Penguin Drop Caps. They're 26 classic books, each one with a beautiful drop cap on the cover, designed by lettering artist Jessica Hish. I've been collecting them and I have 10 so far, but eventually I am definitely going to end up with the entire collection. And every time I show them in a video, you guys are just obsessed. So when I showed the drop cap books in my what I got for Christmas video, I got this comment asking me if I could show you guys how to design them for your own books. I thought that was such a good idea, so today I'm going to show you guys how to design your own custom drop cap covers. So the first thing to do is to pick your books. I grabbed four books from my bookshelf and I went with The Hunger Games, The Fault in Our Stars, Anna and the French Kiss, and We Should Hang Out Sometime. And I picked them because they're all basically the same size, which will make creating a a template across all of them a whole lot easier. But of course you can use any book that you like. So this is what the original covers look like and this is how my custom drop cap books came out. Okay so if you have the exact same books and a lot of you probably do because they're all pretty popular books I'm gonna have the links to the files for my book covers down in the description so you can just go print those out for yourself. But if you want to learn how to customize them for different books then keep on watching. So we're going to begin by creating the drop cap for the front cover. If you want to stay consistent with the Penguin books, this should be the first letter of the last name of the author. If you want to take a shortcut, you can just go online, copy and paste to the drop cap from the original book cover, and then just build out the rest of the book cover around that. But if you really want to make it your own, grab a pencil and some paper and start sketching. So if you're new to lettering, and you really want to learn more about it, I definitely recommend Jessica Hish's book, In Progress. She talks about this specific project along with tons of other lettering tips and tricks. So just start sketching out your letter and it's really up to you how detailed you want the letter to get before moving onto the computer. You can also start thinking about what kind of designs you want to use on the spine of the book because as you can see all of them are slightly different. So once you feel like you have a solid sketch of your letters, scan your drawings and bring them into Illustrator. And then you just want to recreate them digitally. And I can't really give a step by step here because everybody's letters are going to be different. But if you're not great at Illustrator yet, this is a really fun project to practice on. So when you're working on your drop caps, really think about the book and be as literal or as figurative as you like. You can see that in the drop cap for The Secret Life of Bees, the K is literally made up of honeycombs and there are bees flying around. Whereas in Middlemarch it's more of just a stylized letter that kind of invokes the time period the book was set in. So here in the drop cap for The Hunger Games I stayed true to the original book cover's Russian propaganda type of design scheme with the bold text and the straight lines and the angles and then I also included a stylized bow and arrow in the background. In this one for Anna and the French Kiss I used the font Dido which was designed in France. It's just a really romantic typeface for a very romantic book and I also included an Eiffel Tower because the book takes place in Paris. So if you're not too confident in your own drawing skills you can also just kind of adapt the original book cover. So for We Should Hang Out Sometime I just took the heart with the arrow through it from the original book cover and live traced it in Illustrator and then I just put an S over it. That's all there was to it. And then for The Fault in Our Stars, I took the iconic black and white clouds and I kind of redrew them into the letter G. And then I also included smaller versions of the clouds floating alongside. So however you decide to design them, just make sure you pick a background color and then two additional colors for the drop cap. Once you're happy with all your designs, it's time to put together the actual book jacket. Grab your book and use a ruler to measure where all of the folds are going to be 
so that you can recreate it in Photoshop. For these books, the jacket is 8.5 inches by 19 inches. So set that up in Photoshop with guides showing where your folds are going to go. Fill in the entire background with your background color, and then copy and paste your drop cap and put that front and center on the front cover. Now for the slab serif text from the original books, a good match that I found is Cecilia but it does cost about $50 on my fonts, so if you don't want to spend that much money for a fun weekend project. You can also use the font Sanchez, which is a free download, and I'm gonna link both of those fonts right down below. So the front cover is really simple. It's just the drop cap and then the author's name above it and the title of the book below it. On the back cover, you'll want to put a short quote from the book in large text, and if you can't immediately think of a quote that you want to use, a little shortcut is to go to Goodreads and go to the quotes page for the book, and I'm sure that you will find something. Below that is going to be the same across all of the books. I replaced penguin drop caps with my own last name, so you can go in and replace that with your last name, or back to penguin, or whatever it is that you want. Under that it says collectible books from A to Z, and then a fake barcode, and then inspired by the penguin drop cap series. Okay, now for the spine. A couple things are consistent across all of the books. You'll want to include this box at the top with the letter of the author's last name, and below that is this small text where, again, I put in my last name, but you can put in your last name. And then down at the bottom, I replaced the penguin logo with my own logo, and you can put it back to the penguin logo, you can put anything you want there. And then you can have as much creative license as you want with all of the rest of the decorative elements. So you can have some sort of decorative element at the very top and at the very bottom, and then another one kind of a second level in, and then you have the shape that goes underneath the text, the title of the book. Just make sure that you don't make the mistake I made and have your title facing the wrong way. I only realized this after I got them printed. You can see that mine, the title starts at the bottom, whereas in the originals, the title starts from the top. I just might reprint these just to fix that because I just know it's going to bug me forever. But anyway, you can use elements from the book as inspiration, or you can just look at this image of all of the original spines and copy and paste whatever decorative elements you like from those. And I'll link that image right down below if you want to take a closer look and get more inspired. Okay, so now for the flaps. The original books don't have dust jackets, so they don't have the inside flaps, which meant that I had to design them myself. On the front flap, I just typed out the book summary from the original book cover, and I set them in the same font and color as the rest of the design. And then for the back cover, I typed out the author bio in the same font and color, but when I grabbed the author photos, I added a gradient map to them, which went from the darker color of the design up to white as the lightest color, and that way you get a monochrome version of the photo that matches the rest of the book. And that's the entire design. I'll link my Photoshop files right down below if you want to download them and customize them for any other books that you like. And I'll also include JPEGs of the four covers that I designed, so that if you want to, you can just print them out as they are here. Speaking of printing, since the book jackets are 19 inches long, it's a little big for most home printers to handle. You could print them on multiple sheets of paper and tape them together, but I found that the most cost-effective way to print them was to go onto Vistaprint and just print them onto 18 by 24 posters. And that way they were all on one sheet and I didn't have to piece anything together. So once you've gotten them printed, just cut off any excess paper and then grab your books and just start folding them around the books. And that's all there is to it. We're done. If you want them to be really authentic, you could color the edges of the books like the original ones have. And Sea Lemon recently put up a video about how to do that, which I'll link right down below. But I think I'm going to be leaving mine plain since I might eventually put the original book covers back onto them. So now you know how to make a personalized version of the Penguin Drop Cap books for any book that you can think of. You could go ahead and make 26 of these for every letter of the alphabet, or just do them for your favorite books. 
So I would love to know what book would you want to make a drop cap version of, or which of the four that I made was your favorite. Make sure to head down to the description to get links to the templates, the JPEGs, the fonts, everything I mentioned in this video. If you want another video where I'm working with book covers, last year for Back to School I showed you guys how to make custom binder covers inspired by even more YA books, and I'll link that video right down below as well. Make sure to press that subscribe button if you liked this video, and come back every Friday for a new video from me. Bye everybody!